A quick warning. This video contains frank and in-depth descriptions and interrogations of war crimes committed in Afghanistan by Australian soldiers. Traditionally, footage of war comes as heavily edited, sanitized, and pre-packaged propaganda. Think back to the footage of World War II or Vietnam and right up to the shots of the Iraq War. But since cameras are now so common, it's becoming more and more common for the horrific acts of war to be recorded and released. Sometimes by victims, sometimes by bystanders, and even sometimes by the perpetrators or their fellow soldiers. Two months ago, an example of the latter was released by a news program, Four Corners, surrounding a killing by an Australian soldier, anonymously referred to as Soldier C. Here's a still from the footage, which I am not going to run in full. Instead, I'll describe what happened. Australian troops landed outside a tiny village in Afghanistan, one so small that any Google search of its name only brings up this incident. The Australians disembark from two Black Hawk helicopters, which between them are worth at least eight figures. The troops, along with an army dog, rush through some nearby fields towards an unarmed Afghani man, who the dog subdues. Soldier C points his weapon at the victim, and the dog handler tells his dog to leave. While the man is cowering on the ground, Soldier C asks two different people, quote, You want me to drop this cunt? After his commander's response is inaudible, the soldier fires three rounds into the victim's chest, killing him. The unarmed, already surrendered victim was a married father of two named Dad Muhammad. Afghani elders lodged a complaint, and the Australian Defence Force formally investigated the shooting. While they no doubt had access to this footage, they determined the shooting was in self-defence, and therefore legal. Eight years later, after the footage aired, the soldier is now being investigated by the federal police for this murder, and was stood down by the army. Eight full years later. I have no qualms in speculating that had this footage never leaked, none of this ever would have happened. Yesterday the ABC revealed that this same soldier is now under investigation for a separate murder. In this incident, the Australian troops landed around 100 metres away from a different village. An unarmed Afghani man was attempting to limp away from the chopper into his house, perhaps rightfully fearing the Australian troops. Then Soldier C brought the civilian into his rifle's sight and shot him in the back of the head. Another soldier who approached the ABC about this said, His brain hit the ground before he did. Relatives of the victim told an Afghani reporter that he was disabled, as he had developed mental problems after receiving beatings from the Taliban as a young man. After the killing, another member of the patrol was then ordered to dress the victim in a chest rig containing assault rifle magazines, so he would appear as an enemy combatant. This man was disabled after being attacked by the Taliban, then murdered for no reason by an invading force who was supposedly there to defeat the Taliban. Only then to have his course desecrated, to be made up to look like he was one of the people who caused him such harm in his life in the first place. Disturbingly, the ADF has a nickname for this particular incident. They call it the Village Idiot Killing. The same soldier shot and killed two unarmed civilians in two separate incidents that we know of. This soldier who continued to be enlisted in the army for eight years after those killings. What more did he do? An important thing to think about now is that these weren't just the crimes of one man. These were crimes supported and covered up by other soldiers. Crimes that were cleared and delegitimized by the military investigators and military hierarchy. Crimes that were only possible thanks to the massive injustice that is Australia and other countries taking part in this war in the first place. Currently, the Inspector General of the Australian Defence Force, someone who's appointed by the Minister, is investigating 55 alleged war crimes committed by Australians in Afghanistan. I hope you'll forgive me for assuming that very few people will come to justice. See, there's some precedent here. Take the Shinwa Massacre of 2007. After a car bombing, US Marines fired indiscriminately into a busy highway. 19 civilians died. All troops were exonerated and even awarded combat ribbons for the massacre. I hope they wear them with pride. In 2009, in the village of Ghazi Khan, a group of NATO soldiers rounded up a group of what they claimed were Taliban soldiers, who supposedly had weapons and bomb-making materials on them. The soldiers shot and killed 10 combatants after dragging them out of bed in the middle of the night. Afghani investigations showed that not only were the victims civilians, they were mostly schoolchildren. They claimed that US forces were involved in the killing, something that NATO and America denied. And it wasn't until a report that came out in the New York Times in 2015 
that both parties admitted that members of SEAL Team 6 and CIA Special Forces were involved in the killing. They admitted the attack was based on faulty evidence and apologized. No one was charged. In 2010, US Army Rangers raided a house in a village called Katbar. There they claimed they found three women tied up, gagged, and already dead. After Afghani investigators claimed this was not the case, the US military admitted that indeed these women were shot by American soldiers during the raid. They were at the house celebrating the naming of a newborn child. Afghan investigators believe the US tried to cover up the killings. No one was charged. And these are just some of the shootings in Afghanistan where no one faced justice. And there have been thousands of extrajudicial killings on top of that through airstrikes and drone strikes, each as personally devastating as these shootings. When it comes to non-white people in a faraway land, Western militaries can kill with near impunity. There was a comment in yesterday's news that stuck out to me though. It was from the soldier who revealed the story to the ABC. He said of the victim, He was obviously intellectually disabled. Soldier C shot this fucker through the back of the head. It was just so unnecessary. That last part stuck out to me. It was just so unnecessary. Every past, present, and future action by the Australian Defence Force in Afghanistan is unnecessary. Every single one. The war in Afghanistan is an American imperial exercise, enthusiastically supported by Australia for political reasons that have nothing to do with our defence. It's widely acknowledged that the Bush administration lied about why they wanted to invade Iraq, but this same attitude is rarely pointed towards the Afghan war as well. Perhaps it's partially due to the post 9-11 fervour, and perhaps also since it was compared to the Iraq war, which was obviously so bad. I also think that some people just don't understand why the war started in the first place and don't care to find out. Iraq was all about weapons of mass destruction, which they didn't have. And Afghanistan was all about getting Osama bin Laden, which they didn't have. Seriously, Osama bin Laden was a Saudi Arabian who happened to spend some time in Afghanistan. None of the 9-11 attackers were Afghani, and as we famously know, bin Laden was later found and killed in Pakistan. The head of the CIA admitted there were maybe a hundred members of Al-Qaeda left in all of Afghanistan, and the war still raged on. The goal of course shifting to ousting the Taliban and installing a democratic government. And for this, we can only thank our old friends, imperialism and the military industrial complex. America wants puppet states in Central Asia, both for capitalistic and strategic reasons. As we well know, Central Asia is home to much of the world's oil and natural gas reserves, Afghanistan particularly. American energy companies have massive investments in these projects and want their investments safeguarded. For the American state, the Middle East is close to both China and Russia, two parties the United States traditionally has wanted to curb the influence of. Securing a foothold in Central Asia has long been seen as a way to help ensure American strategic positioning. So what, if anything, does any of this have to do with Australia? As of March 2020, nearly $10 billion have been spent on our part in the war in Afghanistan. $10 billion to help bomb a country where more than 40% live below the poverty line. For what? ANU securities professor Clive Williams explained Australia's involvement in Afghanistan as being to show we are a willing ANZUS and Western Alliance partner in order to be well regarded by the US and receive the defence and intelligence benefits that go with active membership of the Five Eyes relationship. Afghanistan, per se, is of little strategic importance to Australia. $10 billion to take part in a war that's killed tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of Afghanis all to be better regarded by the United States in their effort to secure an imperial stronghold. There's no possible way that justice can come from the conviction of Soldier C, nor can it come from the resignation of his supervisors. The only thing that can bring any measure of peace is a united workers' movement, cross nations, cross ethnicities, cross everything. If you're watching this video, you have more in common with an Afghani farmer than you do an American oil CEO or an Australian army general and your politics should reflect that. Thanks for watching. Thanks as always to my patrons. If you want to help support the channel, check out patreon.com slash hardcorelime. Otherwise, liking and commenting on this video is the best way to help out. You can also find me on Twitter at hardcorelime. Thanks again.